highly esteemed Professor Reuter, highly esteemed panel members, highly esteemed academicians, highly esteemed professors, and highly esteemed and dear colleagues. I'm very pleased that I can address you today on this issue of a new education paradigm suited for the needs of the 21st century. And in fact, uh, this is what we have already been speaking about. Uh, the outline of my presentation will be just a few words on the theoretical framework. Then definition of autonomous learning paradigm and higher education and the birth of a new education paradigm fitted for our technological day and age, blended learning examples, autonomous learning in textbooks, conclusion, and a small short bibliography. So what we have here is the situation we inherited when entering the 21st century. It was the so-called panopticon situation or the situation where the professor was here in the middle of the panopticon. And the professor commanded all the knowledge, data, information, and just sort of uh, threw it in little portions at the students who were in the periphery of the panop panopticon. Um, luckily, uh, this has changed mainly thanks to ingenious thinkers and educationalists that we will mention, and not less importantly, through the new technological advances that made the panopticon situation reverse and fall into its opposite. So what we have now as the result of the didactic changes and technological changes, the student is here. The student is in the center of the universe of learning. And all the data, all the information, and all of the knowledge is all around him in the periphery, on the internet, on the web, and on other bearers of information and knowledge. So it was the digi digital technologies, the internet, the open access repositories, libraries, and the birth of the new pedagogy and didactics, which enabled mass teaching, teaching of large classes possible in the high quality way that we used to have only in small group teaching at the most elite institutions always. So now we have all these bearers of information accessible to everyone, Kindle, iPads, iPhones, everything at a reasonably low price. What is the effect of that on the learner autonomy concept? Well, a learner is basically always autonomous and has always been because the process of cognition actually takes part in our body, in our perimeter, um, in our uh, mind, in the way we accept, understand, digest, and reproduce the knowledge that we have acquired. And in fact, all learners have always been autonomous in the final instance, but it is easier if you have <laughs> one professor to a small group of say two or three or five students at most, than if you have a typical large class of today which has one professor with a defined size of the class of 250 to 300 students, for example, in social sciences in Serbia. So shining out the knowledge to 300 people and getting this energetic feedback from them is very difficult. But if each of them is responsible for their own learning and acquiring their own sources um, from the web environment, from the libraries and from the texts that you, well, suggest, uh, promote, and subscribe to for the group on, for example, a Moodle platform with resources on it mm -hmm. for that particular subject and group, then um, your effects are much better, mm -hmm. much more efficient. So uh, we started in 1979 <coughs> in the modern age with the work of Andy Ole, uh, who presented the examples of learner autonomy for adults. And he believed that this critical learning and choosing for oneself 
by, of course, being directed first by the professor, one could contribute to the democratic processes of the society because that creates a free mind, an open mind. Um, well, we actually could shift, thanks to Andre Oleg's work, from a person, an individual, being a product of his or her own society towards <coughs> the idea of a man, a human being, as the creator of society. And that is the democratic uh, pillar built into the system. Um, the learner autonomous autonomy is always um, the characteristic of good learners. And David Little, um, the chief validator of the European Commission uh, for Education and also a previous professor of Trinity College Dublin, said that uh, autonomous learners are the ones who take responsibility for their own learning the ones who reflect upon what, why, and with what level of success they are studying, and also the ones <coughs> whose studying is completely integrated with their own personalities. Mm -hmm. And that is the chief um, idea. Um, of course, this is an, an old East Asian tradition, only to be discovered at the end of the 20th century, as you have seen here, a Chinese philosopher of the Sung dynasty of the 12th century called Zhu Shi, um, pronounced Zhu Shi in Japanese, <laughs> um, the father of Neo-Confucianism or the Neo-Confucianist par excellence, this gentleman, um, said many, many centuries ago that if you have any doubts, think it out for yourself. Do not rely on others for explanation. If there weren't anyone to ask, would that mean that you should stop learning? If you could get rid of the habit of relying upon others, you could advance in the learning process on your own. You see, this is so modern. This is really uh, like the 21st century. Then in the 1960s, we had these wonderful people like David Sutcliffe, um, who actually passed away yesterday, uh, Kurt Hahn, who was a great educationalist, um, and um, Rear Admiral David Hoare, who in the form of the United World Colleges, uh, the first of them being the United World College of the Atlantic, promoted this idea of teaching young people. This is the, one, the third or the fourth one, Adriatic. Uh, young people who were working, studying together for two years from all over the world, fr from 40 to 70 nationalities. Uh, promoting this, this idea of living it out together and understanding the world as it has been changing on their own. Uh, this is an example um, of a blended learning class uh, we have at our faculty, Faculty of Philology of the University of Belgrade. We share lecture notes, uh, submission of papers, group work. Um, on a Moodle platform for each subject, we give students um, topics, which are here. Um, presented and they choose them. Uh, you have a picture of each of them. We monitor how long they are spending on the Moodle group <laughs> and how they are interacting with each other, producing the works. And now through textbooks, okay, we try to teach them the Chinese characters, the kanji, by association. Okay, this looks like a, a Western um, 100 number. And this is the, the rotation that gives you 100 in a kanji form, in a Chinese character form. So if you, this is not a, an etymological method, this is an associative method that helps um, teaching and the Lord of blended learning. And my conclusions, just for the second, um, are that what we have been doing um, and all of these wonderful predecessors gave rise to a new paradigm of education in the 21st century promoting lifelong learning, lifelong adaptation to new technologies, and the challenges at the workplace, as well as an increasingly important process of democratization of our societies. And this is a bibliography, and thank you very much for your attention.